I re- specifically remember Christy from Chalk It Up, who's also here in Raleigh, talked about her top, this top coat that is the only one I've ever used from mm-hmm. the Chippy Barn because she said it doesn't yellow. And I've always stuck yeah. with that. I've never even tried another one. And so um, I can't say I've had a yellowing issue. However, every white piece I've had, I have sold. So I haven't kept it long enough to know <laughs> if it yellows down the road. So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that it doesn't. Um, but nobody's reached out to me that they've had an issue. So. I was going to say, that's the key. You haven't heard from any clients, so I'm sure you would have. (laughs) (laughs) Today, we're hosting the winners of the October 2020 Zebra Review Contest. Our theme was October Glory. The brilliant colors of fall led the way for inspiration. And now, our three winners lead the way for furniture inspiration. We'll be talking with them shortly about their winning pieces, how they achieve their beautiful results. We're going to also spend time discussing top coats. Before we do that, we want to thank our judges. Katie with Katie and Company Furniture Restorations, Lauren with Portland Rose Studio, Keegan with Lemon Drops Reclaimed, Natalie with Array of Sunlight, and our guest judge for October, Joe with Click to Restore. You guys have to make difficult decisions each month as you have so many entries to pour through and choose only three winners. We also want to thank our prize sponsors. Again, really terrific group of companies and wonderful prizes. Mud Paint, D. Lawless Hardware, Surf Prep Sanding, and of course, Zebra Paint Brushes. Listeners, if you are able to check out these pieces while you listen to the podcast, they are featured on our podcast page for you to enjoy. Just go to thezebrablog.com and click on the podcast. Okay, friends, let's learn and be inspired as we talk to the winners. We have Lindsay with Heirloom Furnishings winning first place, Chantel with Rusted Rose Vintage taking second, and Jim with Forgotten Gems Chic scoring third. Congratulations to all three of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, this this was a theme that, in my mind, is just hard to beat. October glory, those brilliant colors of fall are so beautiful. You know, we're excited to chat about your winning pieces shortly. But first, let's talk locations. By the way, for our listeners, we have winners from three countries represented in the October contest, Canada, the United States, and the U.K., we also have to get your weather report. So let's start with you, Lindsay. Lindsay, you live in Ontario? I do, yes. Yeah, it... Uh... We're still waiting for the snow here. It's starting to cool down, um, but we're just fingers crossed for that white Christmas. Yes, and it's probably, I mean, I bet it's pretty likely for you guys to have a white Christmas. Um, It used to, we used to always get snow for sure, um, but as the years go on, we seem to get less and less snow. I, uh, we talk with my husband about when we were kids, there would be like six foot snow banks and now it's, we just really always hope that there's a white Christmas. So it's definitely different. Yeah. That, that reminds me when I was in Michigan as a kid, I mean, you talk about the six foot snow banks, that's the way it was up there. Uh, and then of course, moving to North Carolina, we're lucky to get a dusting sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know what you mean. Are you close to Niagara Falls? Uh, it's about a three hour drive for me. Oh, okay. So yeah. not, not as close as I, as I thought. Do you guys ever make it there? Uh, we usually maybe would go once a year, just kind of as a getaway, just see the sights kind of thing. But uh, obviously this year things are different with COVID. We're just staying home and... Yeah, turning it to the, uh, let's see, National Geographic, <laughs> Watch us, yeah. watching some of those <laughs> those locations from, from the TV. Exactly. What do you like about where you live? Um, we live in the country and I mean, you can't really beat that in my opinion. We, uh, we just recently bought some acreage and built a new house and, uh, have settled down and yeah. So just the quiet lifestyle of where we live, I guess the small town. Yeah, that is nice. It's nice to be in a small town and then to be able to have access to the bigger towns, you know, we don't have to drive too far. So uh, that's very good. What's your weather like today? Uh, the sun is shining. It's pretty <laughs> All right. It's pretty crisp out, but no complaints. It's nice to see yeah. the sun. <laughs> I know, I know. We had sort of a, a gray day yesterday, but uh, the sun is shining beautifully today. In fact, I don't think there's a cloud in the sky, so well, very nice. Well, Chantel, we're neighbors. You we live are. in the great state of North Carolina. <laughs> we cool do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so where at in North Carolina are you? I live out in the country south of Fuquay Varina, which is on the very south end of the greater Raleigh area. Okay. Now, are you 
so we got Raleigh and then I think South is Fayetteville. Are you South like, is I'm in between the two. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Very good. So what's your drive to the coast? What's your it drive takes time? It's about two hours. Oh man. Well that that's you know what? You know, Lindsay can drive to the falls and you can drive to the coast about the same time, close to it anyway. <laughs> that's right. Yes. <laughs> now, Chantel. You don't have a Southern accent, so you cannot be from North Carolina. I'm not. I grew up in <laughs> Idaho. <laughs> I grew up. This is our third winter in uh, North Carolina. Oh, is it? So what do you think about the winters in North Carolina? Uh, I'm still getting used to it. You know, around Christmas time, I'm always hoping for snow. It hasn't yeah. happened yet. I'm really not expecting it to this year. But after Christmas is over, I'm happy that it's sunny and you know, sometimes in February, I think the last two Februarys, it's been 70 at some point. So, yeah. you know, I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's uh, that it really is one of the cool things about North Carolina and this region is that you do get some cold weather. I mean, you, it gets down into the low teens, you know, occasionally, but then you get those high 60s and 70s periodically. So you get some good variety. I think I remember, speaking of a white Christmas, I think I remember about 10 years ago, Maybe that's, that's just a rough estimation that it snowed on Christmas and it was beautiful. Everybody mm -hmm. loved it. And then I think it was two years ago, we got a snow early on in December and it was a lot of snow and it was so much snow that everybody was like done with it. Okay, we got our snow. Now let's just go back to regular North Carolina winters. <laughs> so. Oh gosh, I must've missed that one. I wasn't, I don't think I was here for that yet, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. <laughs> it might have been two or three years ago <laughs> before your time here in North Carolina. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you probably got sunny uh, weather today as well. Yeah, I was just looking outside and you're right. There's not a cloud in the sky today. Yeah, well, yeah. you enjoy. <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, you are from the UK. And by the way, listeners, we had Jim on earlier this year in season two, episode three. She was a Zebra Golden Brush Award category winner. And just as a little side note, uh, listen to the end of the podcast because we have information about the Zebra Golden Brush Awards. They're coming up again soon. So we'll give some details on that. We are excited to find out a little bit of details. I mean, who doesn't love the UK, Jim? I mean, it's all these pictures that we see are stunning. So are you living in the middle of a <laughs> stunning countryside? <laughs> um, well, <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. I, I am oh, okay. kind of in the middle of the country. It's, it's quite semi-rural. So I'm a little bit out of it, but it's only half an hour to get back into the hustle and bustle of everything. Um, it, it rains 90% of the time. So really, yeah, I'd much rather be where you are than here. But <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay, I guess. Well, that's good. I can share that with my daughter um, because <laughs> she is a royal watcher and she loves uh, the countryside and she's like, oh, I wish we could live in the UK. So I'm going to tell her, okay, that's okay. But that's 90% of the time it's going to be raining. Yeah, it rains. <laughs> so. But, but actually the, I'm a part of something called the National Trust where they do have beautiful, um, you know, architecture and beautiful uh -huh. old buildings and they have huge surroundings. So most weekends and holidays we go off and, you know, we, we go walking around there and it's, it's gorgeous. It's great for the kids and the dog. Yeah. So we do a lot of that, but, um, yeah, I, I guess it's like anywhere, isn't it? Where you live, you know, you just, you're used to that and you always want to be somewhere else. I know that's true. That's like that saying that, that we always uh, we always presume that the that the other side of the fence it's greener over there. Yeah, <laughs> it's greener on the yeah. other side of the fence. We need to appreciate where we're at. Well, is it? What's the weather like there today? It's raining. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> it's raining. You're yeah, about all this sunshine and you're getting rain. So it, it had a break. Uh, at lunchtime for about an hour where the sun came out and then yeah it started raining again but that's typical yeah. for this time of year for us it gets a lot colder and a lot wetter uh, and really damp so yeah we have about yeah. we have about maybe three to six weeks of summer and then the rest of the time's rain wow so, well you, yeah. you enjoy those uh <laughs> summery days <laughs> they're very few and far between 
Okay, well, let's get to your winning pieces, Jim. You won third place, and what a unique and beautiful piece it is. I think you mentioned in your post this was for a client. Yes, it was. A, a client chose it, um, and I refinished it for her, um, which I hadn't done a, a cabinet of this style before. Um, but it is antique, and it was it did come over from France. Um, I wasn't quite prepared for the condition that it was in at the time. There was lots of holes and cracks to fill in, beading to mm. put back on, uh, hinges. It was a bit of a, you know, a wreck at the time. But yeah, <laughs> worked through all that, and then I, and got to use the uh, press fern which was amazing because I've been dying to use that colour since it came out. But um, it's not it's not a popular colour here. Um, so it's always a little bit risky. Um, so mm -hmm. when my client chose that colour, yeah, I was over the moon to use it. Now, was that colour by Fusion? It is. It's it's a pressed fern. Yeah, it is. It's a beautiful colour. Now, you, you know, you said you had a lot of structural, so it was a lot of structural repairs to this? Yes, definitely. Well, Jim, you certainly made this piece quite lovely. Uh, a few more questions, though. The hardware is gold, which works nicely with the green. Was this the original hardware? Uh, this this was the original hardware to the piece, uh, which the client wanted to keep. Um, so I just sprayed those up in gold, which pairs beautifully with the green. And, um, yeah, they turned out really well. Great, great decision on that. And we'll talk top coats in our panel discussion um, shortly. But since we are discussing the detail of the piece, why don't you go ahead and tell us what kind of top coat you used on this winning piece? I use um, the Polyvine Wax Finish, uh, which is a water-based acrylic. And I use that for all of my pieces. Um, I just think that it works well. And it also protects really well once it's cured. Well, he, you know, I was, you know, for all the winners, I always like to take time to look over your feeds on your Instagram accounts, and it's uh, it's always fascinating to see the abundance of work that you guys produce, you know, on a weekly basis, uh, and and for that matter, on a yearly basis. But you know, when I was looking back over your work, Jim, you know, you tend to work on a lot of heavy pieces, don't you? Yes, I do. I, I like the bigger, more robust pieces, um, and luckily I'm, we're able to, to source them quite well here, um, such as the, the large sideboards and the big cabinets. They're quite popular as well. They sell, they sell really well. Yeah, you just you just be careful moving these big pieces around. I mean, these things are, yeah. <laughs> are not light. <laughs> You need a you need a special uh, dolly of some sort so that you can just like move them because you because I know when you're refinishing a piece it's like it's not always like one piece stays in one spot I mean you're you know you're working on the back you're doing the structural change you know uh, yeah edits to it so it's a lot of maneuvering I would imagine I need new floors is what I need <laughs> <laughs> after all the the shoving about the pushing them from one room to another um, yeah it's quite challenging but. It's always worth it. Well, it's better to save your back than your floors. So you've made some good decisions yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Well, really nice work, Gemma. Congratulations on winning third. Share your Instagram account for our listeners. Thank you. It's Forgotten Gems underscore chic. Well, Chantel won second place with her vintage green dresser. Great choice of color with allowances of the original wood showing through. It really is a nice balance. Tell us all about it, Chantel. Okay. Well, thank you for second place. I was so excited to get that news. And yeah, that piece um, it was just a sweet little antique dresser that needed some love. I found just not far from my house at a little thrift shop and brought it home. And I knew that I wanted to, I, well, I really love that color. It's um, Ever After by the Chippy Barn. And I've painted, that was the, let's see, I think this third piece I painted in that color. The second one I ended up keeping for myself. I love it so much, but <laughs> um, I used that one and wanted to keep 
what bits of natural wood that I could, I was able to salvage the top with um, the Chippy Barn Brown Wax, which is one of my favorite products to use on natural wood. And yeah, I just, I love that little piece. The green and wood combination worked well. I had originally put uh, a gold like brass hardware on it, but when I sold it, she preferred the white knobs, which uh, looked good as well. Yeah. So when you're messing with the process of choosing hardware, how difficult is that? That's my biggest struggle because, <laughs> <laughs> yes, because it can really change the look of a piece in its entirety. I mean, just, I think I did a side by side of that piece with the gold hardware I had chosen and the white hardware that the, my customer had chosen mm -hmm. and it, just changes the whole look. And so I struggle with that back and forth. And even in other pieces, if it's not selling, uh, I will change the hardware on it and repost it. And sometimes that's the, the trick that, that gets the sale. Well, the nice thing about that struggle is it doesn't require you to do a whole lot of reworking. <laughs> exactly. <know>? Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Now, when I, when I look at this piece, um, and I always find this fascinating, you know, you, cause you guys are always making design decisions, you know, anytime you refinish a piece. And so you've got decisions, obviously about the color, you've got decisions about the hardware, of course, that we just discussed, but just as you mentioned earlier, you were able to leave the top, uh, wood exposed. I mean, you put the dark wax on it, but then the legs are exposed wood. And then that piece in the center bottom is also mm -hmm. exposed. How do you, what, what's that process like for you when you're choosing what to paint and what not to paint any, any special tricks or like, is it just all visually in your head and you just go straight to it? It's visually in my head, but it's also just about the artistry of the piece in itself, which is why I like to do vintage or antique furniture because the craftsmanship that went into that originally. And so every time I pick up a piece, I always think about what can I salvage of the original piece and what can I do to enhance that or does it need completely, you know, refinished? And mm -hmm. in most cases, it doesn't. In most cases, there's pieces you can highlight. And in that one, that little piece at the bottom, um, I think really tied in keeping the top natural and the legs. And so it's kind of a visual thing. Um, what will look best and what can I actually save? And so that was my thought with that particular piece. Yeah, and so much, I guess, uh, oftentimes when you pick up a piece, depending on the, um, you know, the, the structural condition of the piece probably mm -hmm. also determines what you can paint and can't paint as well. Exactly. Yeah. Some of them are a complete overhaul and some of them are not. And I think that's one of the great things about Instagram and having um, a community there. I will throw up questions all the time before I even start on a project. Most of the time I'll know what I want to do, but sometimes I just sit with it for a few days and then I'll reach out and say, you know, what color do you like to, or should I try to leave it natural? And sometimes I've, I've left the whole piece natural when I'd mm -hmm. originally planted to paint it. So yeah, it's, it's fun to, to throw that around with, uh, our group of followers. Yeah, that's one of the nice things, too, about, you know, redoing a piece that's that you purchased that you're going to sell. Because I know custom pieces, you obviously have a little bit less latitude, of course, depending on the right. client that you have. Right. What top coat did you use on this? I just used the Chippy Barn Wax, which is, I prefer to use wax over uh, a poly or anything, but I just have more control with that. And I like the finish, but I used a, just a wax finish on the, the paint and then again, the brown wax on the um, top and legs. Okay. So the brown wax was just on the top and well, where the, where the wood is. Where the wood is exposed. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, that's just a really good job. And just like we were talking with Jim about her style, obviously looking over your feet as well. And it, you've, you've got a lot of variety and, uh, I've noticed as of late, you've done some MCM stuff. So what, how would you classify your style? Gosh, I don't, I don't know. I have recently found a love for mid-century modern furniture. And so in that, I try to keep those lines really clean and the paint really clean. And I think that's coming across in other antique or vintage pieces in a different style. I just like that sort of clean look where when I had originally started last year in 2019, I, I preferred more of a chippy finish or distressed look. And I don't really do that often anymore. It's really transferred to a cleaner look. And I think that's partly in working with so much mid-century modern furniture. 
Man, I wonder what a an MCM piece would look like with chippy paint. <laughs> I, mean, usually... I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know, but I've that never seen one. Yeah, I've never seen one where I've thought, I want to distress that. Like, it just doesn't ever pop in my mind, but maybe someone has. Yeah, I guess it's almost kind of like going against the grain on that. Have you seen that, yeah. Jim, or have you also just seen No, clean actually, I, I haven't seen that at all. But I know that the chippy look isn't very popular here, or it's not, I don't know if it's not particularly popular or just people don't really do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I haven't seen much of the chippy stuff here at all, although I do love to look at it on uh, on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I do love the look of it. It looks great. Wow. Well, I was trying to like really provoke a new style in the furniture refinishing industry, you know, maybe call it the lane look, you know, like the chippy, chippy <laughs> on, the, on the MCMs. It's a lane look. That sounds great. I, I'm sure everybody listening is thinking, oh, just go on, <laughs> just move on. <laughs> They're probably thinking, I know, just MCMs, you don't put the chippy look on the MCM. Yeah. So, no, uh, you'd get a lot of, are you going to finish that? Or, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Chantel, an, uh, another great job for you. Congratulations on winning second. And if you would Thank share you so your Instagram account as well for our listeners. Sure. It's at Rusted Rose Vintage Shop. Very good. Our first place winner is Lindsay with Heirloom Furnishings. You just heard from Lindsay in our intro when we were talking about her living in Ontario. Unfortunately, as we were recording, we had some technical difficulties with her audio and we are not able to feature her sharing about her winning piece. We really hate that as we want to hear from all of our winners. We're thankful that in two seasons and almost 100 episodes, that is a rarity to have these kind of technical difficulties. However, I will do my best to highlight her winning piece. Lindsay's winning piece is an antique dresser and mirror. She chose the color with a twist by Country Chic Paint. They describe this color as a warm cognac color. It's definitely an autumn color. Very beautiful. Lindsay topped it off with her teardrop pendant drop pulls. It turned out really lovely, Lindsay. Congratulations on winning first place. You can learn more about Lindsay's work by following her Instagram account at heirloom underscore furnishings. This podcast is sponsored by Zebra, makers of the high quality yet affordable line of paintbrushes. We set out this season to create unique paintbrush kits that provided all the brushes you need for different types of applications. We have our furniture paintbrush kit, detail kit, room makeover kit, crafting kit, and our best of Zebra paintbrush kit that features five of our most popular brushes. All kits come in a canvas bag with a cute saying printed on them. If you haven't had a chance to check them out, take a few minutes and go to enjoyzebra.com to see the selections. Well, it's time for our zebra panel discussion. Today's topic among our zebra review winners is everything top coats. Maybe we say the do's and don'ts of top coats. We'll see where our conversation leads. But let's start off our discussion first by defining for our furniture newbies what top coats are and why they are so important. Sure. Um, Top coat is something you would use on a piece, either a wax or a poly type of finish to seal the paint. And it really helps with durability. It helps against scratches and, you know, all those things that can happen to a piece. Um, I I use a top coat on every single piece that I've finished. So no piece is to leave the... uh the furniture refinishers studio to the customer's <laughs> home without top coat, right? <laughs> I mean, I prefer it. I think there are some uh, paints that say that there's a top coat, you know, included in the paint. And that can be true. But for um, for my pieces, I always do a top coat. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I personally wouldn't send a piece out to a customer without it being top coated first. Uh, just, you know, to make sure that during the transportation and, you know, for the the duration that it holds up and it lasts. Um, and also, I think that a top coat really finishes the look of a piece off. I know that, you know, when you've put the last coat of paint on, it can be quite a flat matte finish. And then even with a, a matte top coat, it can really just give it just a small sheen and it just really looks finished. Yeah, I agree with that. 
Do you, when you are putting down a top coat and, um, Jim, you mentioned that you use a poly when you put your top coat down, is there, is there any rules about how many, um, coats of top coats you put down? Well, I think I've got a knack for it now. I've, <laughs> I've been through a lot of trial and errors with lots of different, um, top coats and I, as a standard, just use two. But if it's a high traffic area like a table or a cabinet, a TV cabinet or something like that, I will put an extra one on, even though the paint that I use has a top coat in it as well. It's just to make sure that it's extra durable. And also when I've done vanities for bathrooms and things like that, I have used um, a lacquered top coat, which is waterproof and it, apparently it's just the, the strongest that's available. And apparently it holds up well. Yeah, now the lacquer top coat just obviously takes a, um, a lot longer to dry, I would imagine. I think you have to leave it 24 hours in between coats because it can be quite tacky mm. till it goes off. But obviously you need something that's, um, that's going to hold up well, you know, if you're going to be using it in the bathroom and with a basin on top especially. That's one place you would definitely not want to use a wax. <laughs> yeah. no. You would use a wax top coat on on things that, well, I have used it on my own dresser, but I know for some people that are harder on their furniture, using a poly type top coat may be better for that. Um, whereas wax may be better for something that's not highly trafficked or I mean, I don't know. I've used it on quite a few dressers. It really depends on how you use your furniture. And I will ask that for a customer, if I, especially if I'm doing a, a custom piece, what they're going to be, how often they're going to be using it and how they are with their furniture. And that will help me determine yeah. what type of top coat I'll use. But wax, once it's cured and hardened, it does really hold it well. It does. Yep. I, I, yeah. I've... Um, I did a couple of pieces for myself, which I, I used wax on top. And mm -hmm. it is really strong once it goes off. Mm -hmm. uh, I was quite surprised. I think that, you know, as long as your customers aren't using chemicals to clean them with and, you know, scrubbing them when cleaning, right. I think they do hold up well. Yep, I agree. Now, do, do waxes ever require adding a new layer of wax like six months, year down the road. Is there any kind of maintenance with wax versus, you know, the other top coats? Um, I think you can do that. I have heard of that. And it probably just depends on the, the age of the piece or how often it's used, how often it's cleaned. But uh, for example, the dresser that I have in, in my home that's been waxed, I have not had to reapply it and I've had it for quite some time. Again, I think it just is probably situational. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What things do you need to consider uh, when using different types of paints? Now, are there any, you know, because there's so many out there. And I know there's the main categories like the chalk paint, the milk paint, the acrylic paint, uh, you know, ceramic base paint, mineral. So it, do you, are, are there any rules when it comes to top coats and, and what kind of top coat you use for the type of paint you're, you're using? Um, I don't know that there's any hard and fast rules. I did learn a lesson about using uh, black paint. It was a ceramic base paint, and I used a poly finish on, on that piece, and it was an actual nightmare. I repainted it once, but I must have t sanded off and reapplied the poly five times before I got it right. And the trick to that particular piece with black paint was how it was applied, and I found um, through... Instagram actually someone had told me about a microfiber sponge to apply the poly with and it made all the difference for me because I, I don't have a sprayer and I know people prefer that for poly because you get a really nice clean smooth finish but I don't use one and so finally after many uh, struggles I finally found this microfiber sponge that you can pick up in a four pack for a dollar ninety six and saved my life. Did, did you strip it all the way down? Like when you had I, the, when you yes. first had the problem? I couldn't figure out what was going on. And so I thought maybe I had done something in the paint that was making the poly look like it was. So I took it all off just on the top because the front of the piece was fine. It was just a really long 72 inch uh, credenza essentially. That was just a lot of paint. It was a lot of coverage and I don't know what it was, but I, it was just how I was applying the poly. 
and it's just temperamental that way, which is why I think I prefer wax. But I know people that use poly and really like it. it. It really just depends on the person, the materials, the paint. There's so many factors that go into a top coat. Yeah. And that's, you know, that says a lot. You're still furniture finishing after that. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, and that was my other thing that during that tr- that time, I mean, I was so frustrated. And that's when I actually got news from you guys about winning second place in this prize. And it was a real confidence booster that I was doing something right because (laughs) I was so frustrated with that piece of furniture. (laughs) Well, you know, you should, uh, you should write that down just as a memorial too. (laughs) Yes. In a journal entry somewhere. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. Well, I'm glad that everything worked out. I also had um, or I've had a couple of bad experiences with top coats and the bolder colours such as black. Um, I know that in the past when I've tried to apply a poly over the top of black that it's been quite either smeary or quite cloudy uh, which has been a nightmare and, and resulted in me having to go over it again and 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 then reapply the, the top coat. Um, but I think that I ironed out those issues with um, trying a different applicator. I think I I tried using a sponge before um, and I was having those problems. So then I went on to use um, a microfiber. It's like a circular cloth, Mm. but padded. And I just use those all the time now. Those have been amazing. Um, They're just as good for using wax as well. And I think that it's really important what you use to apply them with. Um, I know that I've had issues using using it with brushes as well. So I would always recommend using the microfiber ones like Chantel. Is that what you use with your the polyvine finish is the microfiber? That's what I use now. And I, I honestly okay. wouldn't, I feel like, it, you know, <laughs> after all the, the trial and errors, it's, it's been perfected now. And I wouldn't change from using the the microfiber one now. Yep, that's what I found. It's has worked for me too. You know, it's uh, just so folks know, we're pretty excited at Zebra because we're going to be introducing top coat brushes in 2021, which is next year, of course. And uh, yeah, they're fun. They're going to be phenomenal. Very, very, very smooth proprietary blend of faux natural filaments. And they're going to be great for top coats. Um, A lot of people use our brushes for top coats now, but we've really honed in on this particular group of brushes that uh, we've already had quite a few people saying, when are they going to be here? When are they going to be here? Oh gosh. Well, I can't wait. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. I'll just quickly say that I like wax. If if my top coat is wax, I enjoy that part. If my top coat is poly, I do not enjoy that part. So it really just depends on what on what you're doing. Now, this may be a crazy question, but uh, when we're talking about using wax for the top coats, is there when you wax it once, for example, you've you've covered the whole piece? Do you need to put a second coat of wax on it, or is it just is it with wax? Is that usually just one coat sufficient? For me, one coat has been sufficient. I usually apply it with a brush, but I'll also just apply it with um, just an old t-shirt. And now that Jem has mentioned the microfiber for wax, I may try that as well because um, I usually just put it on and then wipe it off Mm -hmm. in a sense. And so usually one has been sufficient. I think it depends on the piece and how, you know, if it's just a sideboard that, you know, he isn't, isn't going to have a lot of traffic. I think one is great, but I think for, you know, other pieces like maybe coffee tables or side tables or things like that, maybe two would would mm-hmm. be recommended just, just to hold up. And with respect to the lighter furniture pieces like white or neutral colors, I know that I've, there's been a lot of discussion uh, that I've had with refinishers uh, off and on about the fact that sometimes there's a bit of a nervous, you know, vibe going on when it, you know, because there's the fear of putting down a poly top coat on a neutral piece and then it turning yellow over time. Yeah, but the, I've the, definitely the, had that in the past. <laughs> and um, I don't know if if it was the type of poly that I was using. Um, I certainly, because uh, it's so much hard work to have to go back and then lightly sand again and clean and then put another coat on. So I certainly moved on and tried a different poly which is the one that I'm using now but there are some brands who do advertise that there's a non-yellowing with their formula 
Mm. So, yeah, maybe that's one to look out for when you're using the neutrals. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think you can, where social media is great if you're following yeah. other refinishers, trusting what they say and products that they've yeah. used. Because I re specifically remember Christy from Chalk It Up, who's also here in Raleigh, talked about her top, this top coat that is the only one I've ever used from the Chippy Barn because she said it doesn't yellow. And I've always stuck yeah. with that. I've never even tried another one on a white piece or a light colored piece. And so um, I can't say I've had a yellowing issue. However, Every white piece I've had, I have sold. So I haven't kept it long enough to know if it yellows down the road. So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that it doesn't. Um, but nobody's reached out to me that they've had an issue. So, yeah. I was going to say, that's the key. You haven't heard from any clients. So I'm sure that's you right. would have. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jen, you brought up a really good point because there are a lot of really good paint manufacturers with different types of paints. And many of them sell top coats. So just check with them at, or on their websites just to make sure that they don't yellow because uh, I know that's a big deal. I don't know. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, over the years, the last few years we've been doing this podcast and talking to refinishers, I, you know, sometimes I'll say, what's the least favorite part of refinishing? And usually it's the prepping, but I'm getting this sense it's sort of bookend that the prepping and the top coating is not always a heck of a lot of fun. <laughs> is that <laughs> <No>. true? <laughs> Have you ever found that the wax is quite has you know quite patchy where where it's stuck to certain areas better than others and and then you have to go over it a second time with the wax just to get that kind of even coverage? I haven't with the wax that I've used, and I know I'm just going to sound like a chippy barn cheerleader over here, um, but I found products that I like and just like you have, I think with the polyvine, but. I haven't had any issues with that wax and I found it early on when I started refinishing furniture and I've just stuck with it because it's worked so well. Yeah. It's definitely worth sticking to when you find a product that works as it should. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I, I know that when I've used wax in the past and, you know, almost always with chalk paint, that is the case where it, it probably mm. clings to an area better than it does, you know, another area. And then you have to go over it again and, and sometimes the result is just a bit patchy. Yeah, this is why I, I like to stick with a polyvine because it is hard work. Once you've refinished a piece and then, you know, the the last stage of putting the top coat on, you really don't want to get that wrong. Exactly. Yeah. Once you've found a product that you know that works, it's always best to stick to that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, um, I'll be transparent with our listeners uh, <laughs> know, from, you know, it's, it's been unfortunate uh, for, with this particular podcast because we had a technical uh, challenge in a couple different areas, but one was we weren't able to hear all of Lindsay. Um, she was, of course, on the front end of the podcast, but uh, we weren't able to, to keep her on the second half because of some challenges, technical challenges that we had. But we were joking about this particular podcast because it's on top coats and uh, <laughs> it was somewhat consistent. Top coats are difficult. They're challenging. Well, it made this podcast a bit challenging and difficult as well. It's been so, exactly right. right. <laughs> so, it was doomed from the get go. <laughs> so, so for you listeners, we hope you really enjoyed top coats because we're never talking about top coats again on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we may take another go around with it uh, to discuss and it. Everyone further. will have a different story, <laughs> their own horror right. story, I'm certain. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it was good. We just hate uh, the, the challenges that we had, but I'm sure the listeners have enjoyed it. Our producer, Ellis, does a good job of making everything seamless. And we're just sad that Lindsay wasn't able to be a part of this last portion of the discussion. But uh, just, I just want to say thank you to all three of you. I know um, you guys did a phenomenal job. It's first, second, and third place win out of a lot of entries. So you definitely deserve a big pat on the back for doing some phenomenal work and for sticking with us through this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Again, thank you so much. And uh, listen, enjoy the rest of your day, not only our two guests here, but also listeners. So thank, thanks again for, for both of you for hanging with us and thanks for your time. Thanks so much. Thank you. Stay safe, stay well, and enjoy the holidays. Thank you so much. It's been lovely talking to, to all of you. <laughs> Likewise. 
Although we are already in the month of December, we are continuing to enjoy the work of our November featured artist, Jeannie Pope with Blush Vintage. We always love hearing from a few friends of our featured artist, and today we hear from three of Jeannie's friends. We hope it's a surprise feature for you, Jeannie. Enjoy. Hi, this is Courtney from Steel Birch Studios, and I am calling to congratulate Jeannie on being Zebra's Artist of the Month um, this time around. And man, she is a talented artist. All of her work is just gorgeous. It's simple, clean, bright, colorful, um, and unique. You know, and she has an eye for photography and staging. And not only that, she is so funny and just a joy to work with and um, she's super encouraging and she brings a lot of spirit into anything she does and it's an honor to know her and I'm very proud of her and happy for her. So Jeannie, we love you. Sarah with Olive and Fern wanted to leave a message as well for Jeannie. I have the pleasure of reading for you. Here is Sarah's message. Jeannie is one of those people I just clicked with immediately. She makes you feel instantly comfortable and like you've known her forever. She always has me dying laughing and has always been so helpful to bounce ideas off of when it comes to design. She's a visionary when it comes to furniture and interior design. Her distinct style is immediately recognizable and is always a scroll stopper. I'm proud to call her a friend and have her as a fellow judge in the Zebra Collective. This feature is so well deserved. Congratulations, Jeannie. Hi, this is Emily of 1379 Design calling in to congratulate Jeannie of Blush Vintage on being Zebra's November featured artist. Jeannie's work caught my eye a few years ago, and since then we formed an amazing friendship based on our love of vintage, funky and beautiful interiors, and our hilarious conversation, speaking, and only gifts. So Jeannie, I'm your number one fan, and I cannot wait to see what beautiful pieces you dream up next. Congrats again. Several of you have been inquiring about our year-end contest that we started last year, the Zebra Golden Brush Awards. This year, we decided to move it out a month so that you would have the opportunity to pull any pieces you have refinished from January 1st through December 31st, 2020. In January, you will be able to peruse through all of the 10 categories and enter pieces that you believe are your best and that meet the required parameters of each of the category listings. We are working with our judges to get the contest ready. We are more than excited to see all of the beautiful pieces created in 2020. We know it's been a rather difficult year for most, but we are determined to showcase the best of the best in your work. Stay tuned as we share more details in the coming days about the 2020 Zebra Golden Brush Awards. The Zebra Review Monthly Contest has been announced for December and the theme is candy canes. <laughs> That's right. You know, those sweet little red and white candies that make their way from Christmas season to Christmas season to Christmas season. <laughs> you know, they really are more about hanging on the tree than eating them. Have you guys ever had a few make it from season to season and all the Christmas decorations stored up in the attic? Somehow you think it's a fresh candy cane, you bite into it to find out it's petrified, although it still keeps the peppermint flavor. Okay, okay, enough of that. Well, we thought they are popular enough at Christmas and offer some cool red and white inspiration for our December contest. Any variations of reds and or tones of whites can be used on your furniture pieces to enter. Use the hashtag the zebra review and you'll have your piece before a judging panel as they will choose three winners. The judging panel also includes guest judge Lindsay with Heirloom Furnishings. She was our first place winner for October. Great prizes await the winners from Milk Paint by Fusion, D Lawless Hardware, Surf Prep Sanding, and Zebra Paintbrushes. All pieces refinished from January 1st, 2020 to December 31st, 2020 are eligible for entry. We are so grateful for each of you, not only for listening to this podcast, of course, but also for using our paintbrushes. We love it when you tag us in your stories and posts showing what applications you're using Zebra brushes on. And that is not just furniture refinishing, but also painting your homes. We will always make it our priority to highlight your furniture refinishing works of art on our Zebra Painting Instagram account and Facebook page. But we also want to make sure we highlight notable home projects as well. If you have used your Zebra paintbrush on a home project and you want us to check it out, make sure you tag your pieces with Zebra Inspo. That's hashtag Zebra Inspo, Z-I-B-R-A-I-N-S-P-O. 
We would love for many more people to discover the Zebra Before and After podcast. Please subscribe and leave us a review on your favorite podcast directory. It really does make a huge difference in the rankings. And thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Zebra Blogs Before and After Furniture Finishing Podcast. Today's episode is also featured on the zebrablog.com along with contact information for today's guest. Your comments and suggestions for future episodes are always welcome, and we encourage you to share those by clicking on the podcast slide in our header at the zebrablog.com. That's zebra with an I blog.com. Thanks for listening. Stay safe and happy refinishing.